We are convening the 138th press conference to brief you about the updates of Beijing's epidemic situation and to take questions from the general public. In the previous day, the newly added confirmed cases in Beijing amounted to three, with zero suspected case or asymptomatic carrier, and one case was discharged from the hospital. Since June the 11th, when the new cluster of infections were discovered in Xinfadi market, the cumulative confirmed cases in Beijing amounted to 328, and 326 are still in hospitals, and 26 are asymptomatic carriers under observation. So we are stabilizing the situation in the capital city, Beijing, but the general situation in Beijing is still complex and difficult, so we cannot uh, withdraw our awareness from this epidemic. We have to prevent imported cases and the spreading of the infection elsewhere. We have to take stringent measures to curb the further transmission of the infections. We must uh, be committed to the precise, effective measures with targeted measures in particular places, regions, and populations. We have to trace the sources of the infections and have daily quarantine measures and examination of health status. We have to take immediate actions when we discover the infections, particularly in the community areas. We have to take more stringent efforts with higher standards, particularly the quarantine measures or the so-called stay-at-home measures. And we have actually built a team of experts for guidance. We aim to decentralize our expertise to the localities for the inspections so that we could timely discover any problem and optimize the measures taken in the grassroots level. And we have to take centralized measures and the health status inspection of those people infected. And for the health stations in the neighborhoods, they must uh, play their role in expertise. And for the cases, they must stay at home and uh, coordinate in terms of nucleic acid testing, the doctors and the medics at large must be the guardian of the general public. For the people associated with Xinfadi market, if they have any symptoms under observation, they have to report voluntarily. The general public must actively cooperate. If they have any symptoms like a cough or fever, they also have to go to the designated fever clinics for treatment and diagnosis. Today is July the 1st, which is also the 99th anniversary of the CPC founding. So we remain true to our initial mission. Ever since the outbreak of the coronavirus, the capital city Beijing has been implementing the instructions of General Secretary Xi Jinping. We mobilize all the party members in the city on different posts to work on the front line. They shoulder their responsibilities and fight the battle in the frontier. They take it as a political matter. And diving into the front line of the epidemic has been one manifestation of their practice of staying true to their initial mission. We are the models of this new era. And the spirit of the CPC community has been passed on in this epidemic. We also want to pay gratitude to our civilians for participating in and coordinating with the total prevention and control efforts. You start as a good example as a civilian, and the prevention and control measures have been implemented at each doorstep. We have been building a network of prevention and control of the epidemic in the capital city. Today, we have invited some experts from the Transportation Commission of Beijing and a government leader from Daxing District, as well as 
the CDC expert to take the questions from the media friends and to brief us about the updates of the epidemic control and prevention. Now I want to present them to you. They are from Beijing Transportation Commission Deputy Director Rong Jun, from Beijing Daxing People's Government Deputy Head He Jintao, from Beijing CDC Division Deputy Director Pang Xinghuo, from the CDC Epidemiology Chief Expert Wu Zuyou. Now let's give the floor to Madam Pang Xinghuo to brief us about the situation of the epidemiology studies and the new cases. Good afternoon, media friends. Now I would love to brief you about the details of the newly added cases on June the 30th. On the previous day of June the 30th, the newly added confirmed cases in Beijing stood at the number of three, including two males and one female. The youngest is 20 years old and the oldest is 54 years old. They all live in Daxing district. As to the details, they are as follows. Case 1, male, 25 years old, residing in Xihongmen of Daxing district. Several colleagues of him have the contacts with Xinfadi. On June the 25th, he has once shopped in the neighborhood and he shared the washing room with those close contacts. And he was confirmed as a close contact on June the 26th. He has been transferred to the uh, centralized quarantine center. And on June the 28th, he has been transferred by the ambulance to Daxing People's Hospital and was diagnosed as a asymptomatic carrier. And then he was referred to Ditan Hospital and was confirmed as a mild case on June the 30th. Case 2, 20-year-old female residing in Xingfeng neighborhood, Qingyuan Street of Daxing District. She was unemployed. On June the 11th, she shopped in Xingfadi Market. Then she has never went out. And on June the 21st, she had symptoms like headache, vomiting, and so on. But she didn't report and didn't go to the hospital. On June the 25th, after thinking that she has quarantined herself for 14 days, she went out to gather with her friends. And then she was examined as a positive case and transferred to Daxing People's Hospital by the ambulance and was confirmed as a normal case of coronavirus. Case 3, male, 54 years old, residing in Qingyun Dian Township of Daxing District. On June the 19th, he was confirmed as a close contact of another confirmed case, and he was sent to a centralized quarantine station for observation. On the 29th, he was determined as a positive case, and on the 30th, he was referred to Daxing People's Hospital by the ambulance and was confirmed as a positive case on the same day. I have to raise the awareness of the general public that now the risks are still with us. We cannot withdraw our attention to the situation. We must not gather with our friends. And when we have to go out, we must have some protective measures and go to the hospitals if we have any symptom. For those quarantined personnel, they must stay at home and take stringent measures of quarantine and avoid any gathering. If you have any discomfort, you have to report voluntarily and be hospitalized to protect yourself and others. That's all on my part. Thank you, Madam Pang Xinghuo. Next, let's give the microphone to Deputy Director of Beijing Transportation Commission Rong Jun to brief us about uh, the transportation guarantee measures in Beijing. 
Good afternoon. Now, I would love to brief you about the production materials and life necessities, transportation and logistics measures. To guarantee the smooth transportation and logistics in and out of Beijing, the Transportation Department of China has required us to take regular measures in the transportation sector, and we must promote the balance of supply and demand, particularly the production of the key daily necessities and production materials and elements. For example, the effective matching of supply and demand sites, the immediate uh, dispatching of uh, the production elements to guarantee that we can supply uh, better services of transportation for Beijing residents. As to the details, they are, firstly, for those food produce sent to Beijing, we have the green channel policy with no fee or charge. Second, for those departments or agencies like rural-related areas, the vehicles must have the green channels. Third, according to the requirement, any necessities required by the Beijing Epidemic Control and Prevention Leading Group, like uh, the medical supplies or equipment, there must be an emergency measure to guarantee their logistics. Also, the transportation department specifies that the drivers and the loading personnel must have their special treatment in the fields like uh, the quarantine days of 14 days or the body temperature examination. With those efforts, we have printed some documents like the transportation guideline. As long as there is a need, we will handle them to eradicate the difficulties. Secondly, for the um, Commerce Bureau, the Agriculture and uh, Rural Area Bureau, we will coordinate their needs and we ask the enterprises and the other market players to honor their commitments. There will be some lockdown measures taken in those enterprises and agencies or the disinfection of the vehicles. For the trucks with the certificate, they will enjoy more convenient transportation coming in or out of Beijing. For the drivers, in principle, there will be no 14-day requirement of uh, quarantine. And for the other departments, like the rural-related uh, departments, they have uh, formulated their own guideline and manuals. For example, the certificate uh, granting will be kick-started and 300 ha of those certificates have already been issued. The certain responsible agencies must work together in issuing the certificates for the vehicles. The list has been published already on May the 26th, and today I want to repeat that uh, 801195 and 5578191 were the hotlines. As to the urban and rural area-related uh, telephone and the agriculture-related uh, uh, telephone is 82031972. You could go to the hotlines for more information. Thank you. Now let's give the microphone to He Jingtao to brief us about the medics coming to the communities for services. Dear media friends, good afternoon. Uh, from June the 12th to June the 30th, the accumulated cases in Daxing district amounted to 65, and all of them have been treated in Ditan Hospital. And Daxing district government has been strictly implementing the requirements of the leading group, and now the priorities of our work include stay-at-home, 
social distancing to avoid any newly added case. So to implement the requirement in the neighborhoods, Daxing District has been working on both the treatment and the quarantine measures. As to the special needs of hospitalization or the dangerous cases treatment, there are two measures to be implemented. Firstly, for the highly risky places like uh, the certain villages, there have been some lockdowns. So the residents face real problems like uh, the daily necessity supplies or hospitalization. So for the remote villages, there needs like uh, the treatment of uh, some uh, basic diseases or the chronic disease drugs, we will offer the supplies. There will be two vehicles for flexible services of the local villagers, and there will be some staff members stationed in those vehicles. And they even offered the services at the doorsteps of those villages. And there have been uh, the uh, CT scanning equipment or the um, hypertension examination equipment on the vehicles. So the basic medical services will be supplied to the local villagers belonging to the highly risky areas. There will also be imaging analysis or complex disease diagnosis through the remote or the so-called distant medical services. Such a vehicle for medical services combined with the experts working at a distant place will serve the local villagers. And also such a vehicle services will have the reimbursement since June the 25th, such a flexible vehicle has served 12,000 villagers. To make it convenient for villagers and local residents to have better services, for those medical needs of those quarantine people, we have categorized services. If it's general needs, we will have the community health station to send out the doctors. And the staff members of that neighborhood will help that person to get the drugs. And there will be some uh, specialized vehicle to offer those supplies to avoid the further transmission of the infection. And if it's needed, we will send the patient to the nearest hospital for the whole process health management. So the smaller diseases or the so-called mild diseases will be treated locally and the individualized needs will be met. The medical treatment has also been required by the leading group with a notice. There will be diversified measures, particularly when now the epidemic has become a regular situation. We have to fight this battle firmly. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Chief of Daxing District People's Government, Mr. He Jintao, now the floor is open for Q&A. And please identify yourself before you raise the questions. In the fourth row of the middle section. I come from uh, the CMG, so my question is about the result of the nucleic acid. Sometimes the positive cases may have the first two rounds of test being negative, so why is the case? Thank you for your question. Now let's give the floor to the chief expert of epidemiology, Wu Zunyou, to take your question. Thank you for your question. The nucleic acid testing and the antibody testing right now are actually to test two different parts of our body. One is about testing nucleic acid and the other is targeting at antibody. If it's nucleic acid testing is to test whether our uh, nozzle or the throat area has some bacteria. If it's positive, that signifies that we are infected. But as to antibody, it is to reflect the immunolo immunology 
situation of our body. Sometimes the formation of the antibody is about two weeks after the infection. So it doesn't mean that once you are infected, you will be able to examine the antibody existence in your body. It cannot immediately reflect your infection situation. So why is the testing negative? But after that, uh, that person may be confirmed as a positive case. That may be because in the beginning, the antibody didn't form. And that's why the examination result was negative. What about the negative result, false negative result of nucleic acid testing? There are several explanations, because mainly it is our lung to be infected by the coronavirus. And the sample taking is in our nose or in our throat. So when the virus exists in our lung, the excretion of the virus may block some part of our throat, but that amount is very small, so we may not be able to take that virus sample from the throat. And sometimes there may be some uh, um, quality issue of the sampling. The virus may not be effectively taken. And the third explanation is after being infected, there may be some changes in the patients. So the time of sample taking um, really matters, resulting to, to different results of the testing. So the three explanations are the reasons of the false negative. The cases exist in a clinical sense, but uh, it's not commonplace. So we have to require further laboratory examination. If you are a close contact of that uh, person and you have went to some highly risky areas and added by the symptoms, we have to consider the possibility of infection. As long as from the terms of epidemiology, you have to encourage the sample taking for further confirmation. So. We cannot solely rely on the testing in the laboratory. The epidemiology history and the clinical symptoms must be combined together. If that person has never paid visits to highly risky areas or are not a close contact to the confirmed case, then they are basically in a safe area. Next question, please. In the midsection, the third row. Thank you. I'm from CCTV. My question is also to Mr. Wu about nucleic acid. So why is the result of the nucleic acid testing being accepted only within the first seven days? Thank you for your question. Everyone is interested in that question. Why is the result of the testing being effective only in the first seven days. Of course, the shorter the period, the higher the accuracy. We decide that seven days will be the acceptance day for the result of the nucleic acid testing. That's because we consider the probation period of the virus Usually, the incubation period of the coronavirus ranges from three to seven days. Some people may have longer than seven days or even an incubation period of 14 days. So if it's 14 days of incubation period, then we decide 14 days will be the quarantine period of the close contacts. Then why is seven days? The result acceptance period in effect, I think that's a very scientific and uh, very practical determination. Thank you. The last question in the West section, in the fifth row. So what's the change about the uh, mid and high risk situation in Beijing? 
Madam Pang will take the question from China News Service. Since June the 11th, when the new round of outbreak was discovered in Beijing from Xinfadi Market, 11 districts and 41 neighborhoods have been confirmed as the cases of confirmed coronavirus. For example, Xihomen Township of Daxin District, Huangcun Township, Yongding Lu neighborhood of Haidian District, and other five neighborhoods. Those are the highly risky districts. In Xichen District, there are 39 neighborhoods determined to be the immediate risky places. So the situation has been steady and being controlled in those neighborhoods. On the 26th, the Yuetai neighborhood of Xichen District has been lowered from the um, medial, medium level risky area to the low risky area. And the Taiping Chao neighborhood has also lowered its level of risk to the low risky area. On the 29th, Yongding Lu neighborhood has also lowered the risky level to immediate level, to immediate level. The Shibali Dian Township in Chaoyang District and Xinluoyuan neighborhood in Fengtai District, Panggezhuang Township in Daxing District, and Babaoshan neighborhood in Shijingshan District. The Qinglongqiao neighborhood in Haidian District have lowered the risky level to the low risk level. On the 30th, Yongding Men Wai neighborhood in Dongcheng District, Changyang Township, and Yongding Township in Mentogo District have all lowered the risk level to low risks. Hepingli neighborhood and Beixingqiao neighborhood and Dahongmen neighborhood and Changxingdian township together with Lingxiaolu neighborhood in Daxing district have lowered the risk level to low risk. In total, one neighborhood in Beijing has lowered the risky level to high risk to low risk. 17 neighborhoods have lowered the level to low risk level from the medium risky level. Thank you. That's all for the Q&A session. And the news conference has been organized by Beijing People's Government Information Office, Beijing Daily, Xinjiang Newspaper, the Total dot com, Beijing's Time, People's Daily, Beijing Video, News Agency, Beijing Channel, the CCTV, APP, and the China Daily Sinoblog will live broadcast this press conference. Beijing Transportation Radio, Beijing News Radio, Beijing TV News Channel will also have the live broadcasting. Thank you all for participating in this press conference. This is the end of today.